Behold. Behold me, look. Behold me, look quick. He cometh with the clouds. And every eye shall see him. And they which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. That's the last amen. Is that? You can treat this day like any other day. But tomorrow you'll have to deal with the decisions you made today. You can decide to give your life to God today. Do you see the blood is running warm in your veins? That's the only time you can repent. When that blood turns cold, it's over. Trust me with your, your forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can you can you holler hallelujah? Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. 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 Bless your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Praising God and worshiping God is always in order. That's the highest praise. We can't go higher than that. It ought to be in our mouth. When you answer the phone, you ought to say hallelujah sometimes instead of hello. I messed up. I'm praising God so much. I can't help it. I just got to have this praise in my mouth. It's burning up in my soul. It's in my bones. I got to tell somebody God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you all for coming. When we turn to Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 15, it says, Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, a whole bunch of folk, even the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, Patro saying, Jeremiah, answered Jeremiah saying, Look here, Jeremiah, as for the word that you have spoken unto us, preacher, based on what you said unto us in the name of the Lord, we ain't gonna listen. Verse 17 says, but it, we will certainly do whatever thing goeth forth out of her mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, just like we've already been doing. Thank you. The Bible says we and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem. But then we had plenty of stuff and we were great. We were doing well. We didn't see no evil. You see, we think we got away with it because God didn't do anything while we were doing it. They're telling the preacher, I'm not listening to what you said. And watch that. They said, even though you said it in the name of the Lord, we ain't doing it. Because then nothing happened. Y'all yeah. remember the movie, The Passion of the Christ? Mm -hmm. Okay, he captured the pain of Jesus, but he didn't detail the emotional and psychological pain, the mental anguish, the anxiety. All of the stuff that he had to go through besides the pain. See, our, be our belief, our faith is unique. We're the only one who have a book of prophecy. We also are the only ones that have a God that comes and dies for us. We're the only one that can say that. And we shouldn't limit our attention to the suffering, to him suffocating on the cross. Yes, he went through a lot. I want you to think about what kind of person, just for a moment, that could devise such a device that could come up with such an evil device such a torturous way of killing a person think about the type of person who can come up with that who wants to watch a person die slow you want to watch somebody die slowly who knew that, that that bending your knees at the right angle who could figure out that allowing your elbows to drop at the right angle will eventually stop your organ and stop you from being able to breathe this thing that they put them on is just a tree it's just a few pieces of wood. I would have made a chair or a lamp out of it. These jokers, they created a device that they can use to torture slaves to death. In John 18, verse 3, it says, God, God was betrayed. You betrayed God? Verse 5 proves his anxiety and his frustration. By the time we get to verse 20, he's stressed out. Can you imagine? Verse 23, he was humiliated. They chained him up. And, and, and he was abandoned by the time you get to verse 27. They lied on him in verse 30. He went through all of this for you. He was denied in verse 40. When you get to the next chapter, they already beat him almost to death. Verse 2, blood is coming from his skull because they forced thorns into his temple. They mocked him in verse 3. Humiliated him even more in verse 5. Who are these people? 
They condemned him in verse 6. They picked over him in verse 15. And guess what? Still not over. Who is this man that's about to die for you? What kind of man is this that would give his life and give it willingly? It's not like he didn't know what was going to happen. This is the cup he wanted to pass from him. He saw the cup. He knew what was going to happen. Who is this guy that's willing to suffer for you? The nail prints in his hands that we can still see today will never heal. Those holes remain. I have a question for everybody sitting here. When you see him, will you feel sorry for him? This is some type of deformation? Why does your hand look like that? This is my God that looks like a defect. Or does it look like love? All of this suffering, I'm going to be done quick today, is only a part of the dedication he has to the people that he loves. He's trying to show you the amount that he's willing to pay. There would have been no limit to what he would have done to rescue you. It's coming. He's running after you. This is him running after you. Jesus' mother, Yeshua's mother, his auntie, his close friends, they had to see his shame. In John 19, 23, I want y'all to watch this. The scripture said the Roman soldiers, they all of them, all of them took pieces of his garments and his coat. Do you think it was a coat? Do you know what the word coat means here? That's why I put the QR code here so y'all can scan it if you don't believe it. It's an undergarment worn next to the skin. What do you think that is? These profane, these perverse, these people took his drawers. Can I say drawers? They, they took his underwear and his clothes and distributed them. His mother, his auntie, his friends had to look up at their loved one naked. Why isn't beating him enough? Why isn't killing him enough? What, who are these people? Why are you ripping his beard out of his face? Why are you spitting in his face? Where does this natural hatred come from? And God knew they would do this. And he wanted to do it anyway. This is amazing that you have a God that would do this for you. The Bible prophesied before Mary was even born that they would cast lots. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo for his clothes. There will never be a list that, including his drawers. Can I figure out if I can say drawers or not? Underwear. They cast lots. They tear his drawers up, his underwear up, and pass it around so that he can hang there naked. There will never be a list, an exhaustive enough list that will include everything he had to suffer. We'll never even think of everything. Because what we think about is the blood that came from his back and from his head. You don't think about his feelings was hurt. His friends left him. His mama sees him. It's embarrassing. I preached to you and now you see me dying. This is, this is horrible. Peter walked out. Peter denied? Peter? They buried him in a cruel, cold, lonely, dark grave. But before that, John 19, 34 says, but one of the soldiers with the spear stabbed him in his side. And the water that built up in his lungs from him compressing and standing back up, it came out with the blood. God, why didn't you choose a different time in history to come? Why be born during a time where these type of practices are in place? Why be born when these people are in, in control? The Lord said, it don't matter. I need to prove something to you. Luke 15, 4 says, which one of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, wouldn't leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after that one which is lost and keep searching for it until he find it? But God, Lord, it will require you to leave your wonderful domain of heaven. It will require you to get up from your throne. What if saving that one, one of y'all, costs you to be hungry? Can you imagine God doesn't have the concept within him to know what it feels like to be hungry? God said, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Wait, what if it costs you to be thirsty, dehydrated, tired, or weak? God said, yeah. I need to prove something to you. Yeah, God. But what if it costs you being betrayed if your own friends turn their back on you? What if you have to experience disloyalty, despair, 
treachery. Give me another word. Deception, sadness, humility. God said, I'll still come for you. I'll do this for you. What they did to him was wrong. But what you did to him is worse. Don't click off. Stay here. Keep watching. What you did to God is worse than what they did to him. Is your lifestyle today. Are the sins you committed worse? You made him do that for nothing. If he left the 99, and if you're the one he's coming for, why are you running away from him? Which one of your sins you committed hurt his feelings? God ain't weak. The Lord is not weak. But he cried when Lazarus died. It's not weakness. Showing he has feelings. 100% human, 100% God. What does he think? How does he feel when you reject him? You had a chance to repent today. Did you accept him? Don't worry about those physical things that hurt him. I listed all of the, the emotional things I can possibly think of. All the emotional pain. Are you adding to that? Is your lifestyle adding to the emotional pain because now he has to feel like I did all of that for nothing? You're still going to sin anyway? You see this? This here is God coming to look for you. This is what it looks like when you hear his voice and then you harden your heart. You know what you did. Say, I'm sorry. Bow down and tell him you won't sin no more. Nobody's moving. It's all right. Do you know bowing equals worship? That's why I, I, I want you all to never bow down to anyone for any reason ever. But you should become a worshiper. A worshiper of God and limit your bowing to him. Here's why. In Isaiah 45, 23, it says, I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and it shall not return. I mean, this is going to happen. Every knee shall bow. Every knee. Every tongue shall swear. Judgment day is the day this happened. And it's guaranteed. You can't escape it. But you can prepare for it. You can get ready for it. You can do that today. Romans 14, 11 says, For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee. Wait, this is the same thing again? Why would God be saying the same thing again and again and again? Because it's guaranteed to happen that there'll be a judgment day. There'll be a day is written. There's going to be a day that you're going to bow down to him anyway. Why not bow now? Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess to God. If you don't believe in him, that's still going to bow. You might have decided you don't want to give your life to the Lord today. You may have convinced yourself, I'm too young for all that. Right? I want to have fun. You believe in your heart that you got time. I'll get saved when I get older. But when the Lord returns, or if you die before then, the very next thing you'll be doing is bowing and confessing that Jesus is Lord. Has, has, are you hoping that I'm, are you hoping that the Bible is wrong? Do you wish that there was no such thing as a judgment day? What if the Bible is right? What will you do? How exactly? What, how exactly do you escape the prophecies that's written? How do you escape? It's written. It's going to happen. The scripture says you will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. That's not what that means because they already called him Lord. So what is he talking about? In John 13, 13, he says, you call me master and Lord. They already called him Lord. And you say, well, for so am I. Yeah, I'm Lord. Yes. It means you're going to have to admit that he is God and he's the final judge. He's sovereign. He will be the last to determine you had enough time. You had enough chances. You heard enough messages. It is him, God Almighty, that will have the final word. That's what you're going to confess. God, you're God. Hey. Philippians 2.10, same thing. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I'm asking everybody here and everybody under the sound of my voice, everybody watching today, don't wait till judgment day. Start bowing now. You may have to say no to some friends. You may have to break up some relationships. You might have to give up some things. You might have to stop doing some things. The, the one hour before the Lord returns, you still drinking? You still smoking? And he's on his way back? Have you not? Seen the news? Listen, if you have to give up some things, if you have to give up everything, it's all right because you'll be getting Jesus. Tomorrow, you have to deal with everything you did today. Don't think you got away with it because God didn't do anything while you was doing it. 
That's what they said in the beginning. That's the first scripture I started off with. They think they got away with it. They think everything's all right because God didn't kill them graveyard dead when they was doing it. You did some things. You did some things you need God to forgive you for. And because you got away with it, you might think it's all right. You think you got away with it. But everything that you've ever done is written. There's a book and it's written. It's recorded. Everything that you've done. This week, do whatever you want. But you'll have to answer for it next week. This day, do whatever you want. But you have to ask for it tomorrow. Answer for it for tomorrow. Who promised you there'll be a tomorrow? Who assured you that the sun will rise in the morning? God set up everything for you to be saved. All of his abuse was for you to be saved. Everything you, that they did to him was for you to be saved. That guy that punched him in the face, he gonna bow. That guy that ripped out his beard, he gonna bow. That soldier that pierced him in the side, he gonna confess, yes, Jesus is God. And all of this was for you. There was one piercing in his side. Watch this. Here's the revelation. There, if there was one piercing in his side, there was only one soldier that pierced him in the side. Well, why does the scripture say, Revelation 1-7, Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they, they which also pierced him. It says they, but it was only one person that pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail. Because of him, even so, amen. Who are these people that will be mourning? Who are these people that will be lamenting? Will you be wailing because the Lord returned? Not me. Come, Lord Jesus. Come on, God. Come on back. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be crying. I've been waiting on you, Jesus. You know, my heart almost failed. I thought I couldn't take it no more. Life got rough, Lord, but I made it. I'm so glad to see you, God. I've been waiting on you. I've been overwhelmed. Hallelujah. I've been heartbroken. Yes. Hallelujah. I've been poor. I've been broke. Yes. Friends walked off and left me. People died. Family forgot about me. But you are who my heart desires, God. Hallelujah. You're all I ever wanted, Jesus. I've already bowed. Hallelujah. I've already confessed. I've already repented. Hallelujah. I've already given my life to you, God. Hallelujah. I've already cried out to you, God. Hallelujah. I'm glad you're here. I won't be the one crying. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be the one crying when the Lord cracked the sky. Thank you, Jesus. And if you're standing next to me, when the Lord returns, I'm going to turn to you and say, I told you. He came back just like he said he was. I told you he was coming back. He keeps his word. He doesn't lie. He's coming back just like he said he is. Are you ready? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, when the Lord comes back, I'm going to be so happy I didn't preach in vain. I didn't waste my time yes. laboring in this kingdom. Yes. I'm, a, I'm about to escape judgment. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry for them that pierced him. I'm sorry for them that thought they had more time. Yes. I'm sorry for them that said, I'll do this when I get older. I'm sorry for all of them that backslide. Can you imagine there will be a person that backslides the day the Lord comes back? You lived holy all this time. You gave up all this stuff. You lived holy and you decided today? You gave up today? I'm so sorry for the person that says, I'm going to get saved tomorrow. I'm going to go to church tomorrow. I'm going to get baptized in Jesus' name tomorrow. I'm going to tarry for the Holy Ghost tomorrow. I'm going to ask God to forgive me tomorrow. It's too late. There will be no grace. There will be no repentance when the Lord comes back and there will be no mercy. I'm sorry for them. I won't be willing. I won't be willing. Hurry up and come back, God. God, hurry up, because there's people that's waiting for you. There are people on this earth that's waiting on you to come back. That's a fact. And there is no thing, nothing that I'm holding on to that's more precious than seeing God's face in peace. If you see his face in peace, do you know what that prize means? If you, he looks at you and he says, it's all right. Everything is all right now. You see in his face in peace, I don't care what you got. I don't care where you, if, I don't have to go to heaven. I just want to see your face in peace. I did all right. I made it. It's okay now. Oh, my God. Well done, you good and faithful servant. I can walk away from anything. I have no attachment to nothing on this earth. I'm ready to go whenever you come back for me, God. And anybody and everything and anybody, I've sacrificed everything. Have you? I've borne my cross. Have you? I neglected pleasure. Have you? I was hard on my flesh. And I heard there's a reward for them that endures till the end. Yeah. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. 
And when I'm tried, I'll come forth like pure gold. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is why we go through hard times. God is saying, will you still serve me? If your heart hurts, will you still serve me? If your back hurts, will you still serve me? If people walk off and leave you, will you still serve me? If people die, will you still serve me? Will you do it just because you have everything working out for you? When everything is great, anybody can do that. But there's a people that can go through some hard times. There's some people that can go through some breakups and some disappointments and some pain and some sorrow. And they'll still say, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name, Jesus. Bless your holy name, Jesus. You're magnificent, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. You guys ought to be out standing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Everybody in here ought to be begging God to save me. Save me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. You worried about how you look? You had pride and you worried about how you look? You worried about how you look and your soul is in trouble? You worried about if you're going to look stupid and your soul is in trouble? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Behold. Behold means look. Behold means look quick. He coming with the clouds. And every eye shall see him. And they which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. That's the last amen. That's it. Yes, Lord. You can treat this day like any other day. But tomorrow you'll have to deal with the decisions you made today. You can decide to give your life to God today. Do you see the blood is running warm in your veins? That's the only time you can repent. When that blood turns cold, it's over. And I don't mean add God to your life. Say this with me. God wants to be God of all or say it one more time. God wants to be God of all or God doesn't want to be God. God don't you don't God don't owe you nothing. He gave everything. He paid all the price for you. Everything that he went through and now he has to deal with whatever you want to hold on to. But you want to still do this. But you want to still go here. And you think he has to accept you when there are people who have given their life to God. There are people who would rather live under a Vidoc as long as they live holy. It's time to surrender today. You can go to school tomorrow. You can go to work. You can do a great job on Monday. But what if tomorrow is bowing day? How many scriptures did I read that there will be a bowing day? After all the pain and suffering that Jesus went through, what excuse do you think he will accept? He proved to you that he loves you. He already proved that you're special. And with this kind of death, hey. with the kind of death that hey. he went through, he could have came and during a time where they would chop his head off. He could have came when there was a time where they would put him in an electric chair or firing squad. He went through all of that. So you have zero excuses, none. Just shut up and bow. Thank you, Jesus. It was, if it was necessary, God will come back Hallelujah. and do it all over for you. He would do it all over for just you. He would leave the 99. He would go back on the cross if it was necessary. It's not necessary. All you got to do is accept him now. All you got to do is accept him. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate you. Psalm 44, 8 says, in God we boast all the day and praise the name of forever. Praise the Lord. I do thank you all for coming. But I got one last question. Turn it down. Turn it down. I got one last question. What if, if I'm the last preacher you'll ever hear warning you of God's judgment? What if God decided this YouTube message would be the last grumpy, doom, and gloom message you'll ever hear? I'm begging you to not harden your heart. Surrender your life today, right Thank now, you. whenever you're watching this. You. If you're watching this at, at, at next week, don't let the Lord's suffering be in vain. You hear his voice, and you're still sitting there. It's okay, right? You got to move on to the next thing. Tomorrow is promised, right? You're going to do what you want to do. And then you're going to stand before God and say, but God. God, the Bible says there's two books. The book has all the stuff you did, and then there's the Bible. It's just as simple as that. Here's what you did. Here's what you shouldn't have did. Here's what you did. Here's what you should have did. It's just that simple. You can get that whole book, 
of everything that you've done, the candy bar you stole, the lie you told, everything that you've ever done, the time when you cussed somebody out and you think nobody saw you, when you're driving on the freeway and you gave that guy the finger. God has seen it all. He's seen it all. He's seen your wicked, dirty heart. He knows what's inside you when you mumbled and you grumbled. God's seen it all, and all you have to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. I won't do it no more. I want to live holy. Save me, Jesus. I'll live right, God. I'll obey every word in that book. I'll do whatever you say, God. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. If you were sorry, you'd be saying it with me. I'm sorry, God. 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 Hallelujah. You gotta get God to forgive. You gotta get God to forgive. You gotta get God to forgive you. You gotta get him to forgive you. You gotta get him to forgive you. You gotta get him to forgive you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Imagine, imagine if, imagine if everybody closed their eyes right now on one accord, and just said, "God, I'm sorry." Whatever it is that's on your mind right now that you did that you know you should have did, you gotta get God to forgive you for that. Well, you know what you did. You think He didn't see you? The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil, and He will reward every man according to his works. God seen it. You better get him to forgive you before he comes back. Tomorrow is not promised. Today, if you hear my voice, right. this is the Lord's voice. You just don't know it because you're looking at me. Right. You think this is me. This is the Lord's voice. What if I'm the last preacher you'll ever hear warning you of God's judgment? What if you won't hear this no more? What if God won't send this message no more? What if there are no more preachers that's going to, who's preaching like this anymore? Who's telling you about your sin? Who's talking about this? They tell you it's all right. You can't keep all the clamors no way. But the Bible says, when John asked him, who are these people in white robes? He said, oh, those people? These are they that kept the commandment. That means there's some folk that's going to keep these commandments. That means that there are some people that's going to do exactly what this Bible says. Are you one of those people? Will you be in that crowd? Will you be amongst those people? Or are you still trying to hold on to stupid stuff? I still want to listen to worldly music. I still want to go to the club. I still want to drink. I still want to smoke. I still want to shock up. God is coming back, dummy. We got these world leaders faking assassination attempts, trying to start World War III. Do you know what happens when the river you faith, it's already dried up. It's done. Do you know the very next thing that happens? The mark of the beast. And then the Lord returns. He told them that. It's going to happen. It's already in place. And you worried about stupid stuff. You're watching dumb stuff, and you're giving your life to stupid stuff because you can't surrender to God. You just can't do it. But it's all right. My soul is delivered. I'm free. I've said everything the Lord has told me to say. I spent the whole month. There's eight messages of proof that I have told you everything the Lord has told me to tell you. I'm done with these gloom, gloom and doom, grumpy messages. Your soul, if your soul be lost, you're on your own. Thank you all for coming. It's nobody's fault but your own. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to give you one good last chance. One good chance right now while you're in the presence of the Lord, while you're amongst saints of the almighty God. I'm going to give you one chance to just say, God, I'm sorry, to yourself. You can just say it to yourself. Lord, please, I'm doing it with you because I've messed up. I'm doing it with you. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. Where, Lord, what are you going to give God because you messed up? You made him look stupid when he's on the cross because he looked down the annals of time. He looked down the tunnel of time and said, I'm going to save you. But you still want to sin. And he did it anyway so that you have no excuse. What will it take today for you to just get him to forgive? I'm sorry. I'm going to. What are you willing to give God? He gave you everything. What are you willing to give him? God wants your life. He wants you to just turn it over to him and say, this is it. This is my last day of this. I'm not doing that stuff no more. I'm ready, God. I want to live holy, Jesus. I want to walk up right before you, God. I want to obey your will, Jesus. Take that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate you. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Trust me with your 
your forgiveness. Yeah, yeah.